Even after the revocation of his past comments, calls for the resignation of the Minister of Communication, Isa Pantani, soars. And the World Igbo Congress rejects the newly formed security network, Igbo Beago. Plus, politics starts now. I am Justin Akadonia. Now calls for the sack and resignation of the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, has continued to grow. The requests have continued despite the fact that the minister has denounced what he said about Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. He said he now knows better about some of the comments he made in the past and the campaign for his removal is politically motivated. Now, joining us to discuss this is Ademola Adewale, public affairs analyst, and Gwola Oba, also a political analyst. Uh, many thanks, um, gentlemen. Now, the minister has come out to say that uh, he said those things about uh, his links to the Al-Qaeda and, of course, and the Taliban because he was uh, much younger. He was in his teens, according to him. But his denouncement and uh, his uh, revocation, does it make him just uh, justified. Uh, I'm starting with you, Mr. Dewali. Can you uh, uh, attend to that question I just asked? Thank you very much. I am once again at Dewali at Demola Justice. Yeah, he has come up to say or to accept that he once said those things, but it's just an issue for everyone to remain cautious. You will see, as a sheikh, or uh, while he was much younger. The emotions of the circumstances of those days led him into saying or taking the positions he took then. But you will see now, as an occupant of public office, as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, those old days and the actions of those days are haunting him. And that's why we do tell everybody in life there is always a chance. And for every chance, there is a choice. And for every choice you make, there is a consequence. One of the consequences of those choices he made in those days is what you are seeing all around him. But that's notwithstanding, we may need to view him furthermore beyond that past of his. But you know, as a Nigerian, or as Nigerians rather, going by what we are facing, it may be a bit very difficult for everybody to just take off his or her eyes from the past that he had once created. All right, Mr. So Dewali, judging by all that you have said, he may have to do much more than he has been doing. Do and for much every other person, he has should be been conscious doing. The of fact the that he was much younger, does it make it justifiable? Should Nigerians just uh, be so completely forgiven, uh, judging by the fact that uh, we are being plagued by issues of uh, terrorism, banditry, insurgency, and most of them have some sort of religious coloration? You see, there's room for maturity, there's room for growth, and there's room for improvement in whatever status anyone attains in life. I, for a person, am just assuming and I'm believing that once he was that youthful and such exuberance could be adduced to that his age, but now occupying a much more position of responsibility and going by the ills of the nation as we are, we might give him a chance to become a new person. And really from most of his utterance, because looking away from this, if you see some other things that the young man has been handling, we may be, may be, may be forced to believe he is matured now, and we may, not be, we may not allow the entirety of that part to hunt him down. Mr. Demola, I, I don't know if you actually listened to that particular uh, comment uh, when he talked about uh, infielders having to die. You know, even if you are young, holding such a position, what does it make of your personality? That was the personality of old, like I'm saying. Do you understand me? I'm yeah, not ahead. separating him from that he did or that he said then. But going by the opportunity of changing, you know, once someone might be a child, you see, if you are a Christian, Apostle Paul in the Bible does say, he once said, he said, once I was a child, but now I am old. So for Isa Pantami, then he might be what he said he was, or what was said about him, or what he said. But now believing or giving him the opportunity of having changed from his past, or being a much more older and much more responsible Nigerian 
and by the position he is holding, I may want to believe he might be a changed person. But let's look at um, Nigeria specifically now. Like I had said before, we have been plagued, you know, by lots of uh, challenges, uh, specifically insecurity, and banditry, uh, Boko Haram, and uh, most of them, you know, are actually from the northeastern part of the country. When the federal government has a minister who in his past said things about uh, killing people who do not believe in Islam, doesn't it uh, show uh, to some extent that the federal government is actually not living up to his expectations, uh, wanting to fight uh, insurgency and at the same time uh, having a minister who actually supports terrorism, even if it was in his past? Hello, am, am I still on? Yes, you are on. Go ahead. Yeah, like you have just said, I think this is one big foul on the security mechanism and systems of the country. Because while Isa Pantami was nominated and forwarded for ratification, this is what the DSS or the State Security Service should have dug into, and they had all the necessary tools to have run back into his past. And you will see we have a National Assembly made up of several men who also should have had one or two inkling about this, towards which his nomination should have been vetted a bit much more. So this is a security lapse on the entirety of the country. Because look at the years, the issue of uh, the, the just crisis and the Boko Haram insurgents and then the discussions he had with the Al-Qaeda leader. These issues are not as old as 20 years of now. Oh. So our security system, the security machinery should be current enough to hook whoever back to the very recent past. You know, while it was being vetted for, for confirmation, this ought to have taken very serious post then. So but invariably, you will agree with me that it is a slide on So this is a lesson and a learning point for the screening machinery for anyone that is brought up for nomination for the nation's political offices. So I could infer if I said that uh, adequate scrutinies are not really being done for people who are nominated and given appointments uh, maybe to uh, the position of a minister or other appointments in Nigeria. I can't get it clearly. I said I could be right if I infer to the fact that enough or adequate scrutinies are not being done you know, when it comes to appointments in Nigeria. Who do we hold yeah. accountable? Is it the DSS now or the National Assembly? Yeah, is the, is it, it is a joint responsibility. You know, per routine, the DSS has much to do. Then per political arrangement, the National Assembly. So the DSS should have done a more thorough job and move such on towards the National Assembly. Like you will see, you know, on NTA Parliament, the, the MDAs of the country are being audited by the Auditor General of the, of the Federation whose report is forwarded to the National Assembly. So the National Assembly works on that. So in this same vein, in the same regard, security issues prior to confirmation of nominations should be vetted and worked on thoroughly by the DSS, and for the result of which should be forwarded to the National Assembly for consideration ahead right, of such you, nomination Mr. confirmations. Mr. All right, uh, joining us also in this conversation is uh, Mr. Gbonla Oba. Thank you so much for uh, joining us in this conversation. I really want to get your main uh, position on this particular matter. Judging by all the calls across board from Nigerians, do you really think that uh, we should still retain uh, Mr. Isa Pantami as the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy? I think, I think uh, we're having a bit of um, uh, communication issues uh, with Mr. Bola Ogba. Uh, let's continue with Mr. Ademola uh, right now. Uh, so, so far right now, legally speaking, uh, what should be done, uh, uh, judging by all that we have heard so far concerning the past of uh, the Minister of uh, Communications and Digital Economy, uh, what's the legal framework uh, that should be taken on this particular matter? Yeah, like the question you asked, and you see, going by my earlier narrations, now there are two issues here, the past of the minister, and now the competence and performance records on his job roles. Now, going by what he has done, I, because by my training as an internal controller, the past is attitudinal, but the present is performance. So if 
as a minister in that portfolio, if relatively he has been performing, not minding the part that he has, do you understand? Because his position with the Al-Qaeda and the, and the sympathy he had for Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram and the insurgency stuff might not have considerably tortured his performance ability. So if per performance is doing well as a minister, I think the nation should parry with him and cause him to continue to act in that role. But if, peradventure, oh. that same part of his has had so much influence, negatively, of course, on his performance and as, on his role as a federal minister of the Republic of Nigeria, then his stack should be certified. Okay, we are not psychologists or psychiatrists uh, right now, but at what point in time can we begin to analyze and justify that one has completely and truly changed? Yeah, it's asked because maybe now when last he made such comments and with effect from his period of appointment, you know, appointment might con convey much responsibility on someone that may want to make such a person divorce himself from his past. If with effect from when he was onboarded as a federal minister, if he has to change personality, change perception and change attitude, towards nationality much more than that ethnic uh, or et ethnic and religiosity. So we might cause him to continue. But if peradventure his job roles had suffered one or two things from his sentiment and his attachment to the Boko Haram Wala, then it should be off. So this not the, you know though psychologically it, there's so much there are so much connections here. But like I said by virtue of my job role as an internal controller, a link of performance with his present role would have much more weight than hooking him to his past. All right, thank you so much. We have been speaking to political analyst Ademale Adewale. Thanks for your input and your thought in this particular discourse. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much. We're still looking at a cause for resignation of the Minister of Communications and Digital um, e Economy, Isa Pantani, and joining us is uh, Bola Oba, a political analyst. Many thanks for hanging on. Now, one of the main reasons why this administration is uh, judged to have failed is because of the growing insecurity, specifically in the Northeast. So right now, where we have uh, a minister who has uh, some sort of, uh, will I say, uh, interest or... Uh, well, you know, interest uh, with uh, Boko Haram and um, uh, terrorism. Now, don't you think it's actually negating the fight against um, terrorism in Nigeria? Well, what you should be doing is what is done in most respectable and uh, most responsible uh, policies. In matters like this, you uh, self respecting personage and indeed a self respecting government would quickly find a way to, to usher the guy out of the administration so that he does not sit and bias him. The administration for, for as long as he stays any, any longer from the moment that the, the, this part shall come up. All right, uh, looking at all of the issues that have come out since uh, calls for his uh, resignation is that of um, screening and scrutiny of uh, you know, ministerial um, appointees and, of course, people who pass through the National Assembly. What does it really tell on the Department of State Services? Uh, how come this could have just passed them you know, without being noticed? Before you get to the National Assembly, what happens to the DSSs or the SSSs? A, a security check on anybody nominated for public appointment. What, what, why is this uh, SSS come to now? Why are they paid? You must remember that it was under this administration, this same administration, that two agencies of the presidency were given conflicting reports, were given conflicting, conflicting reports about one appointee of the president. It, it, one agency wrote that he was fit for the position, another wrote that he was not fit for the position. So something is inherently and fundamentally wrong, not only with the legislative arm of government, and I'm not holding belief for the Senate there, 
somebody ought to have done his work well. We have 109 senators. But having said that, there is a, a role for the DSS, constitutionally recognized as the NHS, the security service and services. There is a role for them in making sure that any body nominated for public appointment is or a background is set. What did they do? All right, Mr. Obama. So where does this place us as Nigerians and um, um, the country Nigeria, judging by the fact that he is uh, you know, a custodian of um, sensitive information in Nigeria? He is the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy. Don't you think he actually places um, Nigeria and, of course, Nigerians at some sort of risks? Uh, to be honest with you, that's one of the reasons uh, that the anxiety of the people are, are generally spiked. And, you know, apart from, apart from the fact that that may not even be the issue, it is just uh, dignifying for the government to find a way of easing them out so that the government can give good attention to things that will add value to the society. We don't need the resources, time, uh, time, you know, arguments and all these things that he spent on this issue. If the guy can't do it himself, somebody should just show him the door. When you say somebody should say, let it be done, you know, right now, the voice of the people, there's, you know, distinct, uh, distinctive voices uh, everywhere on social media. Uh, uh, Pantomime should stay, Pantomime should resign, you know. If he is not going to resign by himself legally, what should the citizens be doing right now? I don't know what he's doing. I don't know his mind. I just know every minute that he stays longer in that position, he defines, defines the government as a government that is not in control or an administration that is not in control of this personnel, and it inevitably takes the government away from what we should focus on, that is serving the people well. That it's just a distraction. And if nobody gets it in this administration, to be honest with you, uh, it will speak to their legacy. OK, going forward, how do you really think um, Nigeria can truly win the war against um, terrorism and, of course, insurgency, judging by the fact that uh, the federal government has not really named and shamed the people who are sympathetic you know, to insurgency in Nigeria? To be honest with you, I really don't want us to be too academic about it. The government would ultimately define how the people will perceive the government and perceive, uh, and perceive ultimately its legacy. You know what? We have seen a number of our uh, we have seen a number of our studies holding under this government. If this is gonna be an addition to some of those are absurdities, oh Nigerians are prepared for it. And you know what? It's a tenant monarchy. I usually tell people that the presidential system of government, especially the kind of one we have in Nigeria, where the president is almost omnipotent, is a tenured monarchy. One day, May 29, 2023, another president must come. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Agbola Oba, for your thoughts. Uh, we do appreciate uh, your comments so far on the show. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, the newly created Ibu de Agu suffers yet another rejection from an Ibu social political group. We'll be right back. Stay with us.